When you get to the end of your life, what do you think is the number one thing you're going to look back on with regret? Hopefully, we won't have many regrets, but I know a lot of us are worrying that we will regret the time we didn't spend with our kids or our family. You are not alone. If that is your fear, I think it's very normal. I think it shows that you care about your kids and you care about the very limited time we have with them. It feels really long when you have little kids, but we all know they grow up so fast. So This is not going to be a downer episode, although it kind of feels like that right now. We're actually going to be talking about some really practical, easy, and super important ways to fit in quality time, and I have very special guests today that I cannot wait for you guys to meet, so let's get into it. Oh my goodness, you guys. Welcome to the Work Life Glue podcast. My name is Sarah. I am the mom to three little girls ages six, four, and one. I run a subscription box. I share a lot of tips and tricks for busy moms to create balance that sticks and to make the most of the time we have as moms and just the time we have following our dreams and how to do that, how to motivate yourself, how to fit it in. And so if that's something you like learning about and talking about and listening to, please subscribe either on YouTube or on your favorite podcast app. But today I am extremely excited because this is a long overdue interview. I've been waiting a very long time um, just with everything that has happened and changes to my business. We have not been able to make this happen until now, but the timing is perfect. I am interviewing today Jim and Jamie Shields of 18 Summers. I originally heard of Jim and Jamie Shields when I was given the book, The Family Board Meeting. Somehow it ended up on my Amazon wish list, and my mom bought it for me for Christmas back in 2020. I read it at the beginning of 2021. I loved it. Super easy read, as I'll talk about later in this episode. But it was revolutionary. It was such a simple premise, but so impactful. And so they have created a whole business surrounding the principles of the family board meeting. They are a married couple who help other busy professionals create deeper, more connected, more meaningful relationships with one another. They help strengthen families through very simple principles, but very meaningful time spent together. They are a family of six and they are constantly helping other people just like you listening to this or watching this on YouTube to help basically a very similar mission of mine to make what matters most be the center of your life to fit those things in, even if you have a really busy schedule and they do such a great job on their podcast, they have a course, and then also in the book, The Family Board Meeting. So I am interviewing them today and I cannot wait for you guys to hear everything they have to say. I left this interview just feeling so inspired and I could not wait to hear more. Hi, Jim and Jamie. I am so excited to welcome you guys to the Work Life Glue podcast. I am so thankful that you are taking time out of your busy schedules to be here. Thanks, Thanks so for much having for having us, having Sarah. Us. Yeah, good to be here. To- Thank you. Before we jump in, um, I'm familiar with both of you guys. You have your podcast, 18 Summers. You have the family board meeting book. You're on social media. Um, but my audience, even though I've talked up your book a lot last year, they may not have read it yet. They may not really be familiar with what it's all about. So why don't you just share a little bit about your family, your business, and your bigger mission behind all of that? Who we could be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, family has so many details and so many pieces, but really what got us on this mission, um, individually, we were working on, you know, Jim was working in real estate. I was working in building alternative schools. And when we came together and became a blended family, we combined his entrepreneurial education, my early childhood education and family education, and just really wanted to create a way that Jim, you know, really bonded, connected on a deeper level with my boys. And gosh, he just organically came up with this idea and started really enjoying these, what they started out as gym day coupons turned into Cute. the family board meeting book because everyone wanted to hear more about it. And, um, and it just really became our mission to make sure that everyone's making the most of the time they have, which is why we are 18 summers. I love that. I love that. So how long ago was the family board meeting idea like born? We started doing these, um, about wow, 11 years ago. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, both boys are, they were seven and five and now they're 18. That's when I came into their life, which for anyone out there who, when you come into 
into that. And we got along famously, but it, you know, it's a little awkward at first. Yeah. Also running two businesses, you know, coming out of the 08 meltdown with a real estate investment company was not easy. And, um, and it wasn't easy for me to loose those no, controls either. To right. Someone, you know, so if any of your listeners out there are single moms are thinking, how do I fit something like an incredible spouse into my life? You know, that, that balance of really blending the family lines. And so it's been 11 years. So, cause they're 18 and 16 now. And I started, that's seven, amazing in a decade. And we started to share it about a year later at entrepreneur events. People are like, what do you, wait, what are you doing? And I thought, oh, this is so sim- simplistic. It's there's there's simple. no, there's no way that it's, it has merit. And then the more we dug into it, we said, wow, we're, it, it really, it really does have merit because it's built on some very sound principles that I think you can not only use with your children, but your spouse mm-hmm. with the, with the relationships that are most important in your life. And, uh, and, and I think that's a very important thing now with the speed of life right now, the confusion of pandemics and all that we, we are we are losing touch with the people we care the most about and that will only double our grief um or our concerns and that's something we want to avoid yeah i love that and i i love that you took that concept and people loved it and so you made a book i i can't even remember exactly who, like i have a amazon book list that I just send my family links to at Christmas time so that they can buy books. And that got on there somehow. I honestly don't even remember where I saw it, but yeah. And so I got it for Christmas 29 or 20, what year is it? 2020. It would be, I'm like, is it still 2020? I can't remember. Right. Two times. Um, yeah. So I got it right at the beginning. You know, I started reading it last January and honestly, the reason I read it and picked that over any of the other books was because it was short. It seemed to the point and it seemed like it had a good, meaningful message, which I think everybody listening can appreciate. You know, you get to the point, but it's so like you said, it's so simple, but it's so meaningful. And we've been doing it with our three girls for since I read it. I'm like, we need to schedule this in. And my husband at the time was a crazy busy chef. He's still in the food and beverage industry, but he was super busy then. And so I'm like, I don't know how you're going to fit this in, but you're going to fit it in too. And it's been so wonderful, especially for him, since he is so busy to have that dedicated time with each girl, because it can so easily get lost, you know, when there's all three of them at one time fighting for our attention. So why don't you just kind of walk everybody through what actually is a family board meeting? Yeah, we'll walk you through. And then I think the three principles is something that once they grasp, they're going to, they're going to buy in. Yeah. is an intentional focus, a rhythm that we put into our life that er, my children and my spouse are my most important clients, investors, key team members, whatever your career is. They, I see them as my most important. So I'm going to schedule quality time with them. So once a quarter, I spend at least a half a day just with them. And it's built around a few principles. And that one day is such a, a, a pillar of support in our relationship, such a regrounding. And we've been doing it for a decade now, along with other families. So it sounds, oh, that's too simple. So once a quarter, you spend a half a day one-on-one without electronics, doing a fun activity of your kid's choice. And that, that changes the relationship. The answer is yes, it does. Because intentional time like that happens so rarely in the pace of the world today that um, you almost feel like you're cheating. You have an unfair advantage when you put some of these principles to work. And this comes every 90 days, every 90 days, every 90 days. So the blocks, the foundational relationship blocks continue to build month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year. And uh, that's how the family board meeting works. And it's really the, the three principles, which I'm sure we'll get into, that I think are so important to have a successful marriage child, child relationship, even business. I use these a lot of my business things for my own leadership, for things with my team, for my investors. And it's, it's been golden. Mm -hmm. And it's the same principle. So like we have date night tonight, every Wednesday is date night. And so, yeah, it's great. And we have the same rules. It's just, well, once a month we invite another couple, but usually (laughs) it's just the two of us elect phones, computer, like no electronics are allowed. Cause you know, nobody wants to be looking at your phone right? Uh, as, as your face when you're trying to connect. And then, you know, we do a fun activity. We don't, we try not to just do dinner. We try to do something in addition to that. 
we have this great uh, deck of cards where we do a question every, every time. And so that's a deeper way of connecting. And so really the principles are the same. It's not a half day every day. Gosh, I win. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. That would be a few hours. It's a few hours though. Not we take those same principles um, that we use with our children. And also, you know, sometimes even it goes upwards and you can do that with your own parents. I know, you know, getting together with your, your parents or, you know, another loved one. And like Jim said, business relationships, it's really important to just take that focus time. Yeah, for sure. Even friendships. I know the pandemic friendships saved me. I had a newborn August of 2020 and I needed all the one-on-one time with anybody I could get basically in the middle of a pandemic. Like, what do you do? So that, that really helped me there too, as well as these family board meetings. So for people listening, wondering like, okay, so I know what a date looks like with my spouse, but what would a a family board meeting with my kids look like? What are some ideas of of things you guys have done and how involved are the kids? You say it's their choice. So are they planning it in advance? Is it really planned or kind of spontaneous or does it depend on the child? Every child is going to be different. And again, the the most powerful principle, I think, in what we do is the one-to-one principle. Yeah. If you want to have a strong family life, you got to separate the parts of strength in the whole time with yourself, time with your spouse, time with each individual child, because they're all different. None of us want to have that, you know, Jam Brady, Marsha, 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 that yeah. <laughs> which, whether they're the youngest, older or middle, they can feel if they don't get one on one time. But every child's different. And the fact that it's just them, they can't hide behind the sibling who always makes the decisions or, or you maybe are in best intention saying, this is probably what they want to do. Right. You're giving them full ownership to create the day. So you don't know where it's going to go. It, it could go into, but what I can tell you will do, so many parents, especially at Jamie's Waldorf and Montessori education, they say, oh, I want to support my kids' gifts and talents more. Well, one of the best ways to find out what they are is let them create the day. Things will start to rise to the top. So there could be anything from fishing to going to a sp- sports game, to going to trampoline world, to going to a beach where they like to dig for shells, to a princess party, which I've done with my daughter. Uh, It wasn't wasn't my best day, probably. (laughs) I I didn't make the best princess, but she she created those. Going ice skating, climbing the lighthouse, which I think I talk about in in the book, Mm -hmm. Um, just riding bikes through the neighborhood, Uh, going to our beach club pool and Mm -hmm. swimming. They, they will, they all start to uncover and, and share with you what they want to do, especially when you say you design the day mm-hmm. and I go all in. And a lot of people go, oh, they're going to pick something ridiculously expensive. You'd be surprised. In my, you'd be surprised. Though, you could a lot set of a budget. Times, or, they, you know, well, yeah. A lot of the times it is such simple activities that you're going, that's what you want to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when you go all in, um, we let them do it. So we, I know we have a list of ideas, but that gives you a couple of things where it could, one thing we do try to do, like what not to do. I love movies. I love going mm-hmm. to see movies. I, again, one of our main principles is taking a, a break from technology during this time together. So I try not to do anything involving a movie or things like that, or sitting around and playing video games that there's a time and a place for that, but I, I don't want to be uh, on a screen while we're having this valuable quality time. Yeah, I agree with that. I think what we've mainly done is just going to the parks because my kids are so little, like we just go to a park and it's amazing when I can actually like, cause I have a one-year-old, so she's constantly like trying to hurt herself. It feels like, you know, so I'm constantly around her, but when I get to go with just one, they're like, mom, come do this with me. And I can actually do it. And it's, I mean, their faces light up. They're asking to take pictures together and like we relive the moments. So maybe walk through those principles. And I know you recommend like writing about it and taking a picture to kind of, you know, look back on that time together, but what else for the principles do you have? I'll mention too, another question that people ask a lot is like what age to start. And so to go along with the ideas for the board meeting. So we usually start about three, right? Would okay. You Two and a half, three, depending on the child, you know, really they start asking, which is sweet. Um, And so with our youngest, Sammy, who's five, almost five now, when he was two and a half and he was really jazzed to have his first board meeting, he wanted to go pick out popsicles at Target. Cute. That was our whole, and he only (laughs) lasted. We had, we picked out popsicles at Target. We came home, we ate almost everyone in the box. 
And then he was like, okay, I'm done. Like he, he was, Aww. his intention span for that time was done. He started to get worried like, okay, well, but where's everybody else? And why are we doing this? But it was really sweet that like just starting somewhere, you know, I think sometimes we set ourselves up, okay, well, it's going to be some big magical right. something, but you know, like you said, just giving your full attention, whatever that may be, or where you are, just making the space is huge. Yeah. So that's, that's really important. Um, back to some of the principles, like you asked, um, the one-on-one principle, like Jim mm-hmm. mentioned, you know, just giving that focus time to one person, you know, strengthening together so that we can then go and be part of a whole. Yeah. We're important. And to really see the other person for who they are. Cause you know, just as, as you had mentioned, sometimes certain characteristics get lost, you know, or you misinterpret them like, oh, he's the troublemaker. Well, yeah. Maybe he's the creative one, you know, <laughs> like maybe mm-hmm. he's creative at doing all sorts of things, but the only thing you notice is when he stirs the pot, you know, certain things like that are really important. Um, no technology. So we do something in our home called tech fasting. I know everybody knows of intermittent fasting for your health and recharging the body, giving it a moment to rest. We do the same thing with technology in our home. And it's part of our strategy is just taking the space so that you are present, you are available so that you do have a little rest from the world constantly needing you. It's super important. And it also gives you that availability of being present because, you know, Jim tells this great story of, you know, he's at home, he's in work, but he's also trying to get on the trampoline with, with our daughter. And it it was kind of this weird crossover and Maggie's like, Oh, daddy, are you mad at me? And it just, you know, pierced him to the heart thinking like, Oh my gosh, no. And in his head, he's like, but I'm really pissed off at this situation over here, but so often it can come off. It's, you know, hero that hits the wrong person and you never Mm -hmm. know when that's going to happen. Yeah. The, the, that little noise, even if it's around you, that's the importance of when you go to the park, not having that there. Because even if you don't look at it and you feel the buzz, like, your head goes into, what's that about? That could be about work. Yeah. Like, this person said this, then I better be sure I'm going to do that. And, you know, God forbid you check a social media post during this one-on-one time. Yeah. <laughs> you flown the coop because you're giving yourself just a complete, you're, you're making yourself vulnerable to who knows what. Uh, so what we've learned is the more that people will take these fasts, like on a date, uh, the first, when we first started setting date night, I brought my phone. That didn't work too well to take that mm-hmm. one email or that one text or God forbid, rude enough to take a call when you're with your spouse. It never comes anymore. Dates nights go a lot better for me without that. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with your children. If you're going to spend this half a day, go all in. If your business is going to explode and go into flames in four hours, then there's a lot of problems. But what I found is <laughs> that will happen and it doesn't. And there's yeah. even the fact that sometimes things work out <laughs> themselves yes, in a few right. hours, which people are like, wow, I, if I had taken this call 30 minutes in, then I would have gotten wrapped up and it was solved in four hours anyway. And so right. that, that is a very, very important part of this is, is cutting off communication with the rest of the world. You're completely and totally unavailable except for the person in front of you. And that so rarely happens. Uh, especially with our, our our ability to get into work just from sitting wherever we are. It's a park. Yeah. Wherever we can get, we can be in the office right away just by clicking the screen. Uh, so that's that's super important. Uh, and then you know, again, that that when you are having a fun activity with focus reflection, you know, again, I cheated this off of Jamie. Fun activity with focus reflection is the shortest definition of experiential education that there is. That's what experiential education is. If you look it up, it's putting students in direct inspiring experiences and then facilitating what's called focus reflections afterwards to concrete the lessons, clarify values and, and long-term goals. And so you're doing this in a fun way with your children. You're there to build the relationship. So first of all, letting them pick the day because as I'm, I come from the entrepreneur world, we are good intention, but we are pushy people. Yeah. <laughs> So let's say, you know, where you are, um, your, your six-year-old has no interest in the Vikings, but you love the Vikings and you bring her to a Vikings game in the freezing cold and you're like, it's great. We bonded, but she had no interest in the football game. Right. She to do this. She wanted to go to a museum or whatever it is. When you let them pick and, and plan the day and you go all in, that gives them ownership. Uh, and that ownership is very important. And, and at the end of this, what we found, and, and there's studies on this, after a few hours, the compression occurs when 
your defenses start to go down. You're feeling at a, a, a more relatable level. And, and that opens up the lines of communication that you can't get when you're rushing around in the car, listening to a podcast, taking a phone call. It, it's a very different connection point that you can have. Yeah. Normally what will come up there is the chance after having these activities together, maybe a meal. Uh, people get scared of this, like you have to be this communication expert, but it's pretty simple. There's normally some times where there could be a, a genuine compliment or a sincere apology made right there. You'd say, what was your favorite part of the day? And find out what they say. And then they'll probably ask you and you tell them the truth. If it's, and that was really fun doing this, tell them. Say, I just liked being completely off of work and focusing on our relationship because you're growing up so fast. Let them hear that. And normally what will continue from there is the opportunity, it not guaranteed, but the opportunity to either apologize or give a sincere compliment. And we as parents are lacking on doing that. We think we do it more than we do and we don't. And sometimes it's warranted. And one thing I encourage of our entrepreneur friends out there, just because we try to provide, we try to protect and provide the best, we are not immune to apologies. And unfortunately, sometimes you say, well, I worked 60 hours this week. Deal with it that I was a little short. That's a yeah. really bad way to be. We all have gotten like this. And I found the more that I will give a sincere apology or genuine compliment, it, again, Jamie, you say, you come home from these board meetings and it's like your relationship has been regrounded. It's being reset. And, um, and it's normally because of one sentence I said, either I've always appreciated this about you. I don't, hopefully that doesn't go unnoticed or, hey, I just want to apologize. I've been really short and a little cranky because I've been working on some things at work that have stressed me out. They're not on you. And that's not fair. And I'm sorry that if I've been short or, or not present for you. It goes yeah. a, long, a long way. Yeah. And I, I homeschool as well. And I have a lot of people who reach out to me, like, I wish I could homeschool. I want to be with my kids more. I want to have, you know, I want to teach them. And I think this particular topic, the family board meeting, what a wealth, like you were saying of learning and reflection, not just on whatever it is you're doing, but about relationships, about communication, about apologizing, about complimenting and I think the best work we can do as parents is just that focused time. You know, our kids can get lost in the shuffle of the day to day, especially in the world and everything we live in right now, especially it's just amplified even more, especially like we were all stuck inside, but how much quality time were we actually having? We were so stressed, you know, so many families were like, I just want them to go back to school. Like that's not quality time. If you are listening to this and feeling so inspired, so on a mission, on fire to go make what matters most happen in your life to create those meaningful moments with your kids, I want to invite you to take it a step further. In my exclusive community that goes along with my subscription box, in the month of February, we are going to be talking all about maximizing our relationships, specifically those family relationships and those bonds with our kids and actually going through a love on your people challenge all throughout the month of February where we are really taking the principles that Jim and Jamie talk about, taking the principles that I will talk about and applying them to our lives. So we are making sure from now forward, we are spending the quality time that our kids deserve so we won't look back with regret on our lives. The whole subscription box for the month of February is themed around maximizing your relationship. So if I do have more boxes that are left over, head over to my website and you can find that information at worklifeglubox.com. But either way, you can still get into the community and join the community only. And we will have a challenge. We will have the training with Jim and Jamie that's in addition to this podcast episode. So we'll be going even deeper, answering your specific questions. And then I will be going live once every week to help encourage and give you some more tips and ideas to really fit in these ideas into your life with your specific situation. So if that's something you really want help with, it's something you want more encouragement on, I recommend you go join our community only. We have so much fun in there and you would be an amazing addition to the group. And if you use the code brand new, no spaces, all caps, when you go to join the community only subscription, you will get $5 off for the entire length of your subscription as long as you're subscribed. So it's a great saving. It's 25% off. So I know a lot. I can just kind of like hear what my audience is probably thinking. They're probably thinking this is such an amazing idea. They want to do it. Where do they sign up? But also they're feeling like how in the world I have four kids. So if I have to do four family board meetings and my spouse has to do four family board meetings, 
how, how are we going to fit this in? We have so much going on. What would you say to them? It does get tricky. And that's what, you know, when you have two, it's super easy. You just swap. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. (laughs) And then it also is, you know, if you have one having buy-in from your spouse is huge. Yeah. You have a spouse that could, you know, if you slide that easy to read book on their nightstand, because it is, it's, it's a non-intimidating book. Yeah. I could do this. You know, so creating buy-in is, is a huge thing that we talk about, especially with like getting your teens to buy in, to go with you, but also your spouse, getting your spouse on board and having everyone really excited for it. But also, you know, and just saying, Hey, here's something I'd like to implement. I need your help. And just coming up with some ideas together that could work. So whether it's, you know, one person holding down the fort while the other one does it, or if it's getting a sitter for two out of the four while you sure and swap kind of thing. And so really, you know, there is a bit of creativity that goes into it and we even feel those pains, you know, and as our big boys get bigger, you know, 18 and 16, that dynamic changes too. So recently a board meeting that we had with our 18 year old was driving him all the way down the coast of Florida to complete a captain's exam and then, you know, and driving him back up all in the same, in the same breath. And so it's, it changes a bit sometimes and you have to take those moments to say, okay, I could make a board meeting. We could really bond over this moment. Okay. I'm not going to get on the phone while I drive down. Okay. We're going to do a meal. You choose where we're going to go after that. And just kind of taking that time, our 16 year old, right before his driver's test, um, they went and drove all day long. So, you know, little things that may help make it a little bit better. Um, Yeah. Fit into lifestyle, but also when, when you're sitting here, people are going, gosh, that sounds really hard because the way that we normally think will be daily or weekly. Mm, true. Okay? So yeah. Right now in a mindset of, or, or a, a framework a of daily of and weekly. True. Oh my gosh. You know, I'm working six days a week. And so you're saying I need to take four half days and you're thinking that's all this week. Mm, if you yeah. lay out again, well, our, I think mm. our biggest uh, direction in this in the book is that which we schedule gets done. I figure yep. out anything that I really is important to me, I have to schedule it, whether it's working out, date nights, um, going into a new strategy at work and learning about it. I have to put it on my calendar. There's times I'm going to be learning that or dedicating to that. So when you, when you look at a day or a week, oh my gosh, to schedule three board meetings for you, four for us. Right. Or double that for each parent. Right. A calendar of 90 days. In, in this one thing, people go, oh, wow, this isn't that bad to now play with a bigger, you know, chess board here where you're going to just put four dots on this bigger schedule. You'll see maybe this isn't as hard as I thought. I need to put four down. My husband's going to put four down. And since we have more time to play with than a week, a lot more, we actually have 12 or 13 weeks. We can do this. And that's what I think the biggest secret is like, there's no way I would say, try to look at three, four months at a time and schedule it and put it down and let your workmates and everyone know I have a, I have a non-negotiable meeting from this time to this time from 12 to four, or some people do the morning shift of going to work for the, for the afternoon, whatever it is, or, or some Saturdays, of course, um, just integrate it. Just integrate it. And when you look and let at everybody that, know what you're it's, doing. It's huge. And people go, gosh, once I started to schedule them out and look over a 90 day period instead of a week, I was able to fit it in. And when you come right. you know, with your spouse and with your, you know, workmates, they get excited for you. Like I know, you know, Jim's team is very adamant about supporting those times that are on his calendar. And I know I'm very adamant about supporting those times on his calendar. So I think just being Hold and letting everybody know, like, this is just like any of my other meetings. It's on the calendar. Right. It's business, you know? Yep. Right. Or it's even more important. I mean, it's our kids, like, you know, everything you guys talk about, you only get those 18 summers with them. And, you know, you have longer relationships with other people in business and things, but kids, I mean, they grow so fast. Something we have done, you know, if you divide it out, like if you have three kids, like we do, you could just do one a month um, and then rotate or, or whatever you know, we kind of have a cycle, um, and, and just fitting in in that way and just being practical or the third Thursday of every month, that's one of our kids, you know, just making it a, 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 you know, an anchor that you put in your calendar every single month. And maybe it gets shifted as things change, but 
like you're saying, like, it's so important. So it's worth putting it down on the calendar, not just hoping it'll happen. Cause who just has half a day just sitting around these days? Not many people, um, as people who have, and parents who have had board meetings with kids and board meetings with teens, I am far, but I'm sure it will come soon. The teenage years, but how have board meetings kind of been different? Have you met any resistance over the years with teens or are they surprisingly like just wanting that time with you? What has it been for you guys with teenagers? It's been super sweet actually. So I'll tell a little story that, that really shows you what it is. We are in the process of adopting our daughter wow. She'll be here any day. Um, wow. Yeah. We're super excited. And for the adoption, you know, there's lots of hoops you have to jump through and one yeah. of them being a caseworker comes to our house and speaks to all of our children without us in the space, you know, Mm-hmm. near shot, but I can't be present, that kind of stuff. And none mm-hmm. of the children hear what each other says. You know, it's just one-on-one with the caseworker. Every single one of my children mentioned board meetings. And wow. I was like, Whoa. You know, and I even, <laughs> I even later referenced to one of the teens. I was like, dang, like, thanks. Like you said a lot of really nice things. <laughs> And he was like, what are you talking about? I'm super excited. And I thought, oh, that's amazing. You know, and to hear when they weren't being prompted, when I, they didn't think anybody was listening, when they yeah. have these teenagers who've been doing it for 10 years, they really love it. And they really look forward to it. I think it's, it is easy to get buy-in from younger children. It seems yeah. to the older ones, it's a little bit harder, but the, our <clears> teens <throat> are always up for it. And I think, I think part of it is because we started so young. I mean, not so young, 10 and seven. There's a lot of, there's a lot of trust. So look, I'll be the first to say, if you start young, it's a lot easier to keep them going. Because if you, if you follow things in the books, like I do not use these times as a time to plant 50 lectures of how they should improve their life. Like this thing is dead. If you're, you're, you're going into it with, cause they're in trouble and that holding something over their head, this thing is dead. Like literally the pureness of, I just want to spend quality time with you and enjoy each other and strengthen our relationship because this, this is all fleeting and I want to make the most. They sense that they have great memories from it. And so they want to keep doing it. Like our 18 year old, you know, when we do our, our, what was your best part of the day? What was your weirdest part of the day? It's something we do. Remember he said, I really appreciate that dad still takes one-on-one time with so that's, that just shows, and he's a pretty cool, you know, long haired surfer looking <laughs> fisherman, you know, Florida boy, but he, that's his honest thing. So with some teens, it's going to be harder, but I think honesty and vulnerability goes a long way because kids, especially teens have very highly developed bullshit detectors. So yeah. If, you know, wow. My mom is trying to entrap me to get me to go one-on-one so she can give me the next 50 lectures of how my life has not been lived, how it should be. They will sense that. Yeah. And there's going to be a little hesitancy up front, but that's why you have to throw your cards on the table. You know, mm-hmm. vulnerability starts with the parent lowering their guard, not the other way. It can't be with the team lowering their guard. We have to set the example to say to them, and this, what we had lots of clients say is, look, this time is fleeting. I just want to spend time with you. I've been super busy at work. Um, and I, I, I want to make the most of the time that we have together and have some fun. So I'll turn off your phone. You turn off yours. Let's spend a few hours together. You design the day, uh, no strings attached and they will be suspicious, <laughs> <laughs> but if you lay that out, then that's not a bad thing now. And of course this is controversial. I always encourage them to say, well, I know as a teen, you know, a, a sales point would be to miss school. People are like, Oh, miss school. And I say, well, look in 40 years from now, you know, if, if your demise happens, do you think they're going to have remembered this, this day with you together with maybe some really strong relationship connection points or what they would have learned that day at school? I said, this is one of the strongest things we can teach in their life. So to give them a day or two of hooky to be with you and really strengthen one of the most meaningful strengthening relationships in their life that they hopefully pass to their children, I think is quite responsible. Yeah. And what a message that sends. Like, I think our relationship is so important. Not, not every day you're going to miss school, but it's that important to me that I'm putting that today above history or whatever it is you're going to be missing. I think that's, wow. What a message. Like we're not just carving out time in our weekend when you want to be hanging out with your friends or whatever. No, we're going to take this time where I've maybe even paid tuition for you to go or whatever, um, and spend that time with you just doing whatever you want to do. I think 
I can't even imagine what that would say if I, when I was a teen, like if my mom had said that to me, I would, like, I would still look back warmly on that time and probably remember it even more. Absolutely. I have a yeah. friend that recently, a friend that recently implemented the book and her idea was that, cause she has an oldest and the oldest and youngest are very close in size. They're very close. Okay. Even though there's an age difference, they're often get grouped as one, I think, and like pool and such as that. And so her big thing was she, for their board meetings, he gets to miss school because that, that shows, okay, you're older, you're more capable of experiencing these kinds of things. Like it's his differentiation and like, and his rite of passage. And so it's something for the younger one to be like, oh, okay, I'm not you, you know, I think. That yeah. I love that. Um, and have you guys over the past, however many years now, two years, and it feels forever since the pandemic hit, have you change your messaging at all or given different direction for people, especially, you know, I don't, I can't even keep track anymore of what the rules are in different places, but you know, for people, especially like Minnesota, like it's so cold. So parks aren't really as fun. I mean, with little kids, they love going and maybe sledding or something like that, but do you have any other ideas for people who are maybe still like now everything's back in lockdown or things like that, where you can still make that time, even if it's a little bit more complicated, leaving the house? I, I'm going to have to say that we've only leaned more strongly on our principles than the opposite. And I'll tell you one thing that helped, Look, the one-on-one -on -one time it is, it's cheating. When you, when you strengthen a family life, if you have one-on-one -on -one time, you come together stronger as a whole, each individual is better represented. You feel a cohesion. It, it changes it. But I think that one-on-one -on -one time is important, but in the in-between time is important too. I think one of the most important things, and you hit on it before, was digging deeper into this um, principle of tech fasting. Because as you said, when we all came home, we're all there. We're all on top of each other. We're well, always on work. We're we, always on. And we yeah. tried to, what happened? We tried to pacify. So normally, maybe a lot of parents out there that they limited TV or screen time on, a, on an iPad or, or something just opened the floodgates and said, you are unrestricted. We got to survive this, which is fine. There was a time and a place. But what we tried to do is help people pull that back, even on a daily basis, saying even if it's for an hour a day, everybody's electronics are off. I can't get on to social media or email or text or phone call. There's no news on the TV. And I don't recommend too much of that anyway, because we know that how that does it. But yeah. even starting with an hour a day where there's a complete family tech fest, again, there starts to become a decompression more conversation happens because nothing breaks up conversation or presence more than trying to have a conversation and someone is buried in their phone and how yeah. is pretending to answer in a way that doesn't make sense so i think one of the most important things we said is really be intentional intentional about your your tech time and not saying you have to take away technology but have a time and a place when you're completely and totally unavailable and it's really good when the whole family does it and yeah for an hour a day but what we've learned is that hour a day will start to build better conversation more connection more laughter more inside jokes maybe more family planning hey when this pandemic's over we're going here we're doing this but you're missing that opportunity at a deeper level if you're always surface level answering a text that could have waited or responding to a facebook thread that doesn't even matter or it's it, so i would i would say that was a really important part through the pandemic for sure yeah <laughs> Um, an online course uh, during the pandemic that really digs into boundaries, expectations, dedicated space, you know, things that we don't think about at such a high important level when we're kind of flowing in and out of the house freely. But when you are in, when everything is all the time, <laughs> like you are all the time, the wife and the mother and the cook and the mm -hmm. teacher and the entrepreneur, like you have to do all of these things at one time, like hold on a second, everybody get back in their box. So really, you know, for your listeners that are part of your box club, yeah, we're, we're teaching for coming up in February. Like, it's just really important. I wanted to kind of allude to a little bit of that, that we'll talk about. Um, yeah. Things that we, we taught through that program, but really, you know, we were hearing a lot of people thinking, you know, saying, wow, we are just everything all the time and I can't handle this, you know? And so mm -hmm. really just a couple of, guardrails, honestly, to set into place. And as you referenced earlier, anchors, 
you know, and they can be things that you do as, as far as holding space, like the boundaries, expectations, dedicated space, or it can be things like these family board meetings that are huge things to look forward to, but all of them really set a cadence and they set a level of expectation, whether it be something you're looking forward to or something that, that really um, clarifies how you're going to function in your day. It's all really grounding for yourself and for your family. Yeah, I agree. And I, in our, in my box community for January, we talked about time management and one of my products actually was screen blockers that you literally stick onto your phone that say, I am listening. I am considerate because I know for me, I am horrible. Like, especially I'm thinking about business ideas all the time. And if left to my own devices, I would not pay attention to my kids at all. And I'm, I'm homeschooling for reasons to be with them. And I, I want so badly for them to see like you are important. So I love, love the idea of tech fasting. Um, what a simple thing everybody can do. Even, you know, the board meetings are amazing, but those day-to-day things matter too. And I think that's such a wonderful gift to give your whole family and yourself, because I know for me, I get overstimulated, but I keep going back to it all the time. You know, it's, it's an addiction. It really is. And I, I love that you guys are really being conscious of it and, and putting those parameters. And I think it's a great lesson for our kids. Like the adults have to do that too. Like it's addicting to us too, but you know, the boundaries really are important. Are there any other last tips that you guys have for building the relationships in between the board meetings? I love the tech fasting. Is there any other small thing you guys do like that? Yeah, I was actually going to mention too, during the pandemic, we started the dinner time challenge. And so what happened was we took that tech fasting concept and we moved it into like dinner time time timeframe because 60 60 years ago, the average dinner time was about 90 minutes uh, in a study they did. And three years ago, right before the pandemic, they did it in the average almost 12 minutes. Yeah. Wow. 90 minutes. That's amazing to me. It doesn't even sound. No. But yeah, it just shows science, how much right? we've gotten into a rush and haven't noticed right. six decades has completely changed that dinner meal. And so yeah. during the pandemic, we really took the opportunity, like, okay, so we're home together anyways. One, you know, I'm cooking more anyways. How about we just take this time and space that's already being utilized for food prep, food consumption, cleanup, that kind of thing. And we dedicated it to be our screen free time. So two hours, five minutes, in our family's two hours, someone else's family might be 30 minutes, whatever. Right. It can be. For us, it's 5.30 to 7.30, no electronics. And so it doesn't mean that we sit around and stare at each other or that you yeah. and I have some deep, meaningful, spiritual conversation for two hours, <laughs> but we're available and our brain gets a rest and maybe we're outside more. Maybe I have an extra child chopping vegetables with me or setting a table, whatever it may be but that's kind of the challenge that we put to ourselves. And we put screen like that screen time on the Apple phone where it just shuts yeah. down for those hours. And so we did that and it's been really beneficial and it's amazing how, you know, now we're going into this. Is it the third year we're going into this? I'm not I sure. think so. <laughs> <laughs> on repeat constantly. Oh, yeah. Right. So last, even just last night, the duration at which our five and seven year old can sit at a table even after they're finished eating to just be together. I was so impressed. Like Jimmy, when he got up and like went and sat at the counter and I'm kind of motion, I was like, we're still here. Like this is right. amazing. Like nobody's doing anything other than like being right here. And it's neat to see how, when you're not rushing off to the next thing and you have right. parameters, boundaries, expectations, it's so grounding and it just really makes that space available. Yeah. yeah I love that. I even with little ones, like my four-year-old, I mean, six minutes is probably her average before she's like, I'm off to play or cause destruction. And then our one-year-old's like screaming, throwing everything. But I, I love the intentionality of it. Like my six-year-old could definitely do that. I could even like, I'm big into timers to stay productive, but maybe setting a timer of 20 minutes, you know, we're all going to sit at the table. If you are done and you want to color, that's okay. But we're going to sit here and we're going to talk because that's huge for us too. But with little kids, it can be really hard. So I, I love the idea, first of all, that it does get easier (laughs) as they get older, but the intentionality behind it, that we're going to linger. I love that word. Like we're going to linger. We don't have any plans of what we're going to talk about. We're just going to be together. And that's huge. I think that's so wonderful for our kids to see. And yeah, I really can't believe in however many years, 90 minutes down to 12. That's 
crazy, but I I'm living it. So yeah. From a friend of mine. So it was, it was shocking. So, and again, we're all, we're all feeling our way through. We can't realize these type of shortages or see everything just overall, you know, for, for advice. And I say that lightly, but there's, there's an overall, I think strainer you should always keep in mind with everything you're going through. I have not in the last decade of what we've done and we've met thousands of families where I haven't met one perfect family. No. Yeah. So, but we put this, this incredible pressure on ourselves for perfection, yeah. especially with family life. And you heard all oh, the perfect family. The per- I don't know who made up that silly saying, but it really has done an injustice to family because I haven't met one and we've met lots. Mm-hmm. And when you have that, as your strainer, kind of your filter and looking to have the perfect family, you set such high unrealistic expectations and pressure on yourself and your kids. It doesn't work. It's not about perfection. It's about bridging imperfections, making the most of the time you have. Uh, and if you take away that, that desire for perfection, I find that you relax a little bit more and you don't beat yourself up. So all of a sudden you're like, holy cow, my husband and I, missed doing a board meeting last quarter because this happened this happened messed it up never going back to that we're done that's what perfection does say oh, yeah. we were supposed to do date night every thursday night we've missed it twice now forget it that we throw away the baby with the bathwater when we look for perfection and say, say you know what i missed doing board meetings last quarter let's get back into it there's a more gentleness to yourself um, which you need because this ain't easy. It, I don't know if no. said it was easy or whoever said it was perfect. I don't like to call people out for being wrong, but man, they were wrong. <laughs> yeah. There's no perfect family. And when you start to take that out of your vocabulary, I think things start to actually get better. Yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure like the best movies and books ever written were families that look perfect, but under the surface were really messed up. So I guess I'm going to take like, I'm going to take some pride in that. My family does not look perfect because it's, it's not, but that's just life. And yeah, I think when we go into parenthood too, we have these like rose colored glasses because so many moms, I think compare and they wonder why is their family like that? And mine's not, no family is what you think it is, you know, behind the curtain. And it's usually chaotic, especially with little kids. Like nobody knows what's happening half the time, but I just, I love the idea of trying, doing your best, giving yourself grace. That's a huge message I talk about too, because I think people look at us who are quote unquote influencers. I don't really like to call myself that, but as being perfect when really it's no, I'm not perfect. And I try to share that, but I I also feel like I've learned a lot that I want to share to help, but I'm by all means not perfect. So I appreciate you talking about that. So for my audience listening, who loves who stay to the end and they are loving this whole idea of focusing on the family and, and putting each individual kid, um, first for a a period of time and they want to learn more, where can they find you guys? I know you have your podcast, you're on social media, you've got your book and you've talked about your course. Why don't you share where they can find all of that? Yeah. 18summers.com is the best place to find all things. Um, we're probably most active on Instagram. I specifically, I answer from there. That's how we got connected. Yes. Um, and so that's really our, probably our most active. We share our podcasts on there weekly, but yeah, 18 summers, just number one, eight summers with an S on the end.com. Some of our Perfect. writings are on there too, which we don't, a lot of things that we don't share in other places. Like we have our travel blog on there and such as that, which is a fun. Yeah. Read if you like to cry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> told. That's what I've been that's told. Like, so Yes. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day. I think this is really going to bless so many people and and really open their eyes to some new ideas to really spend some one-on-one time with their family. Excellent. Thanks so much Thanks for, having for having us. us. I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation with Jim and Jamie and myself. I just love everything they stand for. I cannot get enough of talking about this topic because it's so incredibly important. I talk all about creating balance that sticks, but what matters the most really at the end of the day are our relationships. You can balance your time the best you can. You can make beautiful meals. You can do all the cleaning, do all the cooking, work really hard. But if you're not pouring into your family, and that is one of your priorities, then what is the point? What is the point of all of that? At the end of the day, all we can really take with us when our body starts to fail, when we're not doing so well, you know, and after our life is over, 
all we have left, all our family is going to have left of us are memories. And the only way to make, make memories is to really connect with your family. And this family board meeting idea and some of the other principles and ideas that Jimmy and Jamie talked about are so fundamental to having those memories, to making those memories, to fitting them in. So I just encourage you, this was a really deep topic. It's something so important. So I don't want you guys to just turn this off and go about living your life. I want you to stop, take a second, really ask yourself, are you spending enough time with your kids? Are you getting that one-on-one time with your kids? I know it's overwhelming. It's hard to fit in. It feels like one more thing, but it's the most important thing. Trust me. It really truly is. I'm not even close to the end of my motherhood, but I just have this sense of how precious that time is. And once they're not that age anymore, they will never be that age again. And those relationships are so important. I know my relationship with my parents now is so strong because they did pour into me a lot. And I want the same for my kids and I want the same for their kids. So if we start these principles, even if we don't, didn't have a great upbringing, even if we don't really know what we're doing, we can start it now. We can start a generational trend of really focusing on the family and making that time for one another. And it truly will radiate into all areas of your life and their lives and the lives of the future generations. It's that important. So I hope you guys will take some time to really think about and reflect on this idea and I will see you for the next episode. Have a great week.